Google will have you thinking that you have cancer when it could just be an infection. I don't want to irritate Mrs. down there. She already gets super mad at you as it is because you don't wear breathable clothing or cotton underwear. At least use the right soap and cleaning set. What's up you guys? It's me Aaliyah and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing amazing. Let me know down below in the comments if they're on. Now this is a touchy topic because hygiene just seems to be all the jokes and stuff in the media but if you can't take topics seriously such as sex, birth control, vaginal odors, periods and stuff like that you may exit because this is a safe space for everybody. I would also like to mention that this video is in collaboration with my good friend Aslia Williams. You can check out her video down below. I'll link it after you watch this one and let her know that I sent you to her social media if you decide to go watch it. I would also like to mention that there are time stamps for this video in case you're only here for certain parts of it and those will be right up here for you and down below in the description box. I want to say I'm not a doctor, gynecologist, OBGYN, nothing of that. This is just from personal experience and research. It's about to be summertime and nobody wants to be fishy and smell like Miss Peaches. I promise you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into who is so when it comes to your no-no square, there's some basic things that everybody needs to know, and that includes odor. Now, a lot of people frown upon your purse smelling any type of way other than fruity and like roses and mahogany teak wood and rose ivy and water scents from Bath and Body Works. Honey, it is so unrealistic, and if you don't know that by now, give yourself a break. A coochie is gonna smell like a coochie. You can't have it smelling like roses and fresh spring water. If there's any foul odors and you have like stuff coming out of it, please inform your doctor or gynecologist. Google will have you thinking that you have cancer when it could just be an infection. Google can be your friend sometimes, but when it comes to health and stuff like that, it's really not. Cleaning your coochie hoo-ha box, whatever you wanna call it, 101, let's get into it. When it comes to cleaning down there, please do not stick anything inside of it. This is called douching, if I'm not mistaken. And this can really throw off the pH of your inside of your cooch. And you don't want that. It makes everything really uncomfortable and douching seems like a lot of work. All you have to do is get some water and get some soap and gently clean it with the washcloth, loofah, or even your bare hands if you wanna be super gentle. Don't be afraid to touch it. It's yours to keep. Get comfortable with it. When it comes to cleaning down there, I definitely recommend that you use things that are more on the less complicated ingredient side because things with less ingredients have just been proven better because it's less irritating and you never know. If you can't read the chemical, you probably shouldn't be using it, especially for such a highly sensitive area like that. I definitely recommend the Honey Pot Sensitive Wash for your lady bits downstairs because it's really gentle and really, 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 really easy to find and really inexpensive for the quality of the product. Also, support black owned businesses because a black woman does own this business. So thank you Missy for creating this. In the summer you should be doing a little more often because we're sweating, stuff builds up, bacteria builds up and you really should be getting that all off of you especially down there before odor can come about because the sweat and bacteria build up but I would say when it comes down there you should wash at least once a day using warm water and soap. And if you're wondering some of my favorite soaps to clean on there is once again the Honey Pot Sensitive Wash for your little lady bits. Money friendly, easily accessible and black owned business which is a bonus. Another soap I would like to recommend is the Dove Shower Foam. Now, usually when it comes to specifically cleaning down there, I like the unscented and original one, but honey, my mom just got this one, so I kind of have to deal with it. I feel like Dove is one of those soaps that's just kind of like, thank you for moisturizing my skin and not giving me an infection. I love the entire Dr. Bronner's brand. When it comes to specifically, my when it comes to specific, when it comes to specifically. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you my no no square i love the unscented one but right now i'm just using the peppermint one because baby i use this all over my body and i feel squeaky queen right after and that's just that on that when it comes to all day freshness, I always recommend this in all my feminine hygiene videos or hygiene videos in general. Steer towards cotton underwear. I know we love the lacy and silky and satin trend going on right now and I'm not telling you that you can't wear any of that because at the end of the day it's your body but I definitely recommend that you at least wear cotton underwear a couple days of the week. If you're not going to do that, you should at least be wearing them every night and this is because it lets everything breathe. It just keeps this open. The gates are open for her to get some 
some air. Every other part of your body needs air. Why not your cooch? I also recommend that you do not wear super tight, unbreathable clothing all the time. If you like wearing super, super, super skinny jeans, make sure you at least give yourself a break three to four times a week. Once again, you need to let down their breathe so I can get rid of all that stuff that is in it because this is a well-oiled and self-cleaning machine. And if you're not at least providing the gateway to where she can breathe, she does everything else for you. Why can't you at least give her some breathing space? I also recommend that you sleep with uh, an underwear or no underwear at all. Now you're probably thinking, Aaliyah, um, I have people walking in my room. When it comes to this, you can wear a big t-shirt. You could just sleep completely naked. I've slept completely naked multiple times and it's the best thing in the world. Granted, I hope nobody came in my room that night, but hey, sis felt amazing the day after. I mean, she always feels great, but super great the day after that. Can you see a pattern? The way to stay fresh at her breathe. Now, when it comes to freshening up midday, this could be a touchy topic because people are like, Ew, you no girl, listen, we never know what's going on 100% of the time down there. So if you notice a little odor that you're not really fond of from uh, your southern part below the equator, when it comes to things like that, I definitely recommend you investing in some feminine wipes. Wipes? <laughs> I definitely recommend you investing in some feminine wipes for down there that you keep in your purse or backpack for school. Or if you don't want to go all out and get feminine wipes because you would feel weird if your parents found them or you just don't feel the need to invest in something like that, you can get some baby wipes. Baby wipes are a go-to. They're literally made for babies. Babies. babies get irritated by everything. They have to make it with the least irritating ingredients as they can. And why wouldn't you want to use that down there? But if you want to get some good feminine wipes, I definitely recommend, once again, the Honey Pot Feminine Wipes. They're usually sold out, so when they go in stock, you better get them while you can because they're really freaking good. In the summer, once again, when you're sweating and bacteria is building up down there, it's okay to like want to freshen up throughout the day, which is why I recommend these wipes. Because girl, not everybody can get to a shower at 2 p.m. if you're at a theme park. That's just, that's just not reasonable. That's just not how these things work. A big part of this video we're going to be talking about is periods because I feel like when it comes to feminine hygiene, people always talk about how to stay clean off your period and how to be fresh off your period, but nobody talks about it on your period, which I don't know why because on your period, you have a lot of things going on. You have blood coming out of you by the pint. Your emotions are all over the place. You're bloating, you're cramping, you're breaking out. You just feel like overall. But anyway, I'm here to fix all your problems. So for me personally, I used to be a heavy flow girly. My cramps used to be really bad. I used to blow really bad until I got on the birth control pill. I literally have been on the pill for like about to be two months. I've noticed such a drastic, drastic, drastic difference in my period flow and cramping and bloating. My period usually lasts up to eight days, but ever since I started birth control, it has shrunk down tremendously. And my heavier days used to be two day two and day three. But now I don't really have any heavy days. I just kind of bleed for like a couple days. I'm still trying to see what my average day count is for my period now. But that's just what it's like before and after the birth control pill for me. So take it how you want it. I've been having my period since I was 12. I'm about to be 18 years old. I know how my body works, okay? I'm ready to give you some tips that have helped me. Now when it comes to relieving general period symptoms, I recommend that you either A, work out even though you don't want to get up. It gets your blood flowing. And for some reason, working out and getting active just helps. I don't know. The doctor said it. I didn't. I don't work out to make to feel better. I personally like to take another way of relieving my symptoms, which is painkillers. Vidal, Tylenol, and Advil are my go-to painkillers. And something I have to tell you when it comes to painkillers on your period, avoid aspirin because it can actually make you bleed more. Who would have thought? So when it comes to your period, avoid aspirin. You're already bleeding enough. You're losing enough blood. Yeah, it's natural, but yeah, it can be freaky. And why would you want to take something that makes you bleed even more? Girly, not I. Couldn't be me. And also a last result, if your period is super bad like mine was, you can always check out your options of birth control if you really want to. Oh, and one more option, you can always switch up your period products, which I am about to talk about right now. This isn't even a recommendation. This is a unspoken, spoken rule. Make sure you're changing your tampon and pad every two to four hours. When you leave it on for too much, you can sometimes smell it. And I'm telling you this because we're talking about feminine hygiene, keeping clean. And if you want to keep clean, you need to stay on top of that tampon and pad. And also, if you leave it on for too long, you can bleed through. Now, granted, everybody's flow is different, but I just recommend that you change it every two to four hours because that's a very general and very big time gap. When my flow used to be really, really, really heavy, I was changing my pad like every three hours slash tampon and it was full. Imagine.
Imagine. This leads me to my next thing, and that is a tampon talk. Now, if you don't know what toxic shock syndrome is, baby, toxic shock syndrome is basically when coochie can't breathe because you left a tampon in for too long. It's really bad for your body, and it really, really freaking sucks. A lot of people deal with this, but don't really talk about it. But just know if you're a, oh, tampons only gal, if you're gonna be like that, use tampons throughout the entire day and use pads at night so you at least let Mrs. Down there breathe because, honey, it is not safe or okay. Just be plugged up. 24 7 especially on your period which is when pretty much the only time people wear tampons but you get what i'm trying to say just change it out and let it breathe at night if you're a strictly tampons person because nobody wants toxic shock syndrome and it sucks and i'm pretty sure you don't want to go to the hospital especially right now miss corona lache the virus is not going to let that happen they will not give you a bed oh another big tip i have for you drink lots of water this actually surprisingly helps your flow go a little faster every time on my period i don't drink anything but water notice that when i drink water i tend to bleed out more in less amount of time and that's kind of how I shrunk my period days from like 9 to 10 down to like between 6 and 8 it may not be a drastic time difference but it's something so drinking a lot of water helps you a lot like I said before exercise when able I know a lot of, of my athlete friends that are female actually say that because they play sports their periods only last for like three days I'm all of a sudden a volleyball player all of a sudden I'm a cheerleader working out tends to shorten the span and relieve a lot of the symptoms on your period so definitely try it out it might take a while for you to figure out that the symptoms are gone or at least a little better but anything is better than nothing avoid scented products i said this when i was talking about cleaning down there but scented products are just really not good for you down there because the chemicals mixing with the natural balance of your hoo-ha even if it's not going on the inside i'd rather just be safe than sorry like i said if you want to avoid scented stuff I, it's preferred but if you don't really care you can always use whatever you want to do i'm not telling you what to do i'm just giving you my tips and tricks and what i have found based on research now this is something that i'm kind of still iffy on and that that is trying organic products. Now, I personally don't use organic products, but tampons and pads I personally use because my flow was so heavy. I'm probably gonna have to change it because my period has lightened up so much. I really love the brand U by Kotex. Now, I know there has been a lot of controversy of all the chemicals that comes in brands such as U by Kotex and Always and things like that. I've heard that when it comes to organic products, because there is less stuff in them, it actually helps with cramps and some of the really, really, really bad period symptoms. It actually just makes them a lot better and just tolerable so definitely let me know if you experienced that because if that's the case honey i'm about to be all organic in this household even though i really don't need to be because thanks to miss pill i don't have to deal with many symptoms anymore <laughs> so another tip i have for you which is pretty much something i never really talked about on my channel or showed you like my personal ones now i am 17 if you're a grown person please leave this is really weird my parents actually might get mad at me for doing this but it's fine i don't really care i'm here to be the big sister to y'all that y'all never had slash the mom let's get into these period panties period panties or slash underwear period specified underwear Our underwear that you wear on your period that you really don't care if you mess up these really come in handy because when you're on your period why would you put on your really expensive lacy ones like girl if they get messed up you're gonna be in shambles so you might as well invest in some that if you really don't care that they get messed up you can just toss them instead of trying to scrub out the blood of them let me know if y'all want a tutorial on how to get blood out of underwear because honey my mom is the laundry legend and she has taught me how to get period blood out of clothes and underwear because girl how many accents i've had because my period was so heavy to the point where i didn't even know i was bleeding that much and I bled through my clothes and underwear. It's terrible. These have seen terrible things and messy things, but thanks to mom, we're past that. So I definitely recommend that you look into how to clean underwear if you don't want to keep rebuying period panties or you just get some that you really don't care about from Walmart, Target, whatever you want to do. It is what it is. Definitely recommend when it comes to heavy flow girls. I see you. I know you. I acknowledge you. I was you. When you're super heavy, what I used to do was have on a pad and a tampon at the same time. Yes, I was that freaking heavy. When I didn't have access to a pad to wear with my tampon because I used to bleed so much I used to have a penny liner and girl that pad tampon combination used to save me so freaking much now, I don't know if that contradicts with the whole let it breathe thing that I've been preaching in this video but honestly if you're a heavy girl you probably don't care about it breathing you probably just don't want to bleed through your clothes which I understand what I personally used to do when it comes to heavy periods so that may be a tip that you want to try out if you're super heavy I don't know it's up to you truly now I have been preaching about cotton underwear and how you can wear it throughout your period and throughout to stay fresh but honestly if you don't feel safe i definitely recommend that you invest in some leak free underwear these are kind of a spandex dry fit underwear when i was on my period and it was super heavy i like to wear these throughout the day and at night i would match up with a overnight pad and a cotton underwear because baby once again need to let it breathe but these are literally just a dry fit underwear that prevent any leakage through them they're super stretchy these are actually nixteen nixteen was actually one of my first sponsors back in the day and i still use them to this day so that's to say a lot about their brand i love these so much especially 
especially um, when I was on my heavy days, day two and three, and I was in school and I had teachers that didn't allow me to go to the bathroom for whatever reason to go change it, even though girl, I shouldn't have to ask two times to go to the bathroom. If I need to change my pad before I bleed all over your seat, let me go because I will. It comes to situations like in school, you can't really go up to change your pad or tampon. These are a go-to and lifesaver. When I was in public school, honey, these saved me so many times. I can't even tell you half the times that it saved me. They are amazing. Let's get into hair removal. Now, this is a very, very, very touchy topic because people, for some reason, don't like to acknowledge that pubic hair exists, but honey, it for sure exists, and I'm pretty sure everybody in quarantine is very much visiting sis. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of ways to do hair removal. I'm going to talk mainly about shaving and waxing because they are the two most popular ways that has to deal with getting rid of hair down there. Personally, coming from a 17, about to be 18-year-old girl, I like to shave the entire thing, but when I'm going on vacation and stuff, I like to wax strictly my bikini line. I have found that this helps me a lot. It is painful, yes, but I'd rather not to deal with little hairs poking out of my bikini line on vacation because that's just my personal preference. I would like to mention that whatever you want to do with hair removal, whether you want to remove it or not, that's totally up to you. This is just me giving tips to those that may not have a figure as a mom or a sister to help her have these conversations. First thing I want to talk about is shaving down there. Now, when it comes to shaving down there, I definitely, for one, recommend using a men's razor that has at least four to five car razors, blades, Blades? Blades? Is it blades? Four to five blades because, honey, the more blades, the less work you gotta do. I would also like to mention that you should gear towards the men's razors that are made for shaving the face because, honey, it doesn't get any more gentle than that. When it comes to things such as shaving cream, gels, you've probably heard about conditioner being used, shaving creams being used. I'm telling you right now, your go-to for shaving down there should probably be conditioner because it softens the hair or coconut oil because it softens the hair and loosens up the skin in sort of a way and it moisturizes it and calms it from irritation the razor. So let's get into actually how to shave down there because I feel like a lot of people don't go in depth but honey we're about to get all in the details. For step one I definitely recommend that you trim before you start shaving. Would you rather go into the forest with a pair of scissors or would you rather go into the forest with a sledgehammer, sledgehammer, <laughs> chainsaw. When you trim down the hairs it actually helps prevent the razor from not doing its job properly and it makes the job go 10 times fast. You can literally just get any type of scissors. You can literally have coochie hair scissors if you want. I literally have some. So definitely for step one, trim before you start shaving. After you do this, I recommend that you apply your shaving cream or oil or conditioner. I personally like to go between coconut oil and conditioner because honey, it just softens the hair and makes everything easier. And I let it sit there for a couple minutes because it needs to sit there and let us do its magic. While I do that, I pretty much just prep my razor and get ready for shaving. So for step three, this is where you actually start shaving. You want to shave in the direction that the hair is growing. So if your hair is going downwards you want to bring the razor downwards as well because going against the hair initially can create razor bump and also going against the hair can also just cause pain so we definitely want to not get into that so for step four after you get most of the hairs off you can begin shaving in the opposite direction of the hair growth if you want to I notice that sometimes I have to do this because sometimes going in the direction of the hair growth after a while especially after the main portions of the coochie hair is gone it just doesn't do the same thing for me so now you can start weed whacking and doing everything you want you can go sideways the opposite side of the eye that doesn't matter if you want to do that go ahead and do you something i also want to mention is that you should be rinsing off your razor multiple times because honey the more hair that's stuck in there the less is going to work and you're just going to be wasting your time and going over the same area 10 times it's not good for you or your skin because it's going to get irritated all that for no hair to come off rinse off the razor don't be scared to kick up your leg on the side of the tub and start shaving and use a mirror you should be comfortable with this down there so it's okay to look at it it's okay to want to get in detail so don't be afraid to kick up that leg because that prevents cuts and razor burns and everything like that nobody wants that sis I'm just trying to help you so after you finally get all the hair off of you and your pom pom you should definitely spend time rinsing it off and make sure you, making sure you get all the hair off and nothing is caught in any creases or crevices or anything like that now when it comes to making sure sis is not irritated I definitely recommend that you apply an alcohol free aloe vera or baby oil I personally like to use baby oil because all the aloe vera I have used it actually makes it burn for some reason I guess because it's still like an open follicle I personally like to use baby oil it makes it super soft it moisturizes and it cures my irritation Sometimes coconut oil depending on the day but mainly baby oil 
me personally, I have taken an interest in wanting to do this. Am I scared as hell to do it? Yeah. I'm very interested in getting my whole thing waxed because honey, shaving is just a hassle. It has a lot of negatives to it, along as waxing does too. But me personally, I would just rather get it waxed because it's one less thing I have to worry about every time I go to the pool. And I feel like it's a run for its money. And when I wax, when I get out of the shower, the hair's not gonna start growing back. When it comes to waxing the whole thing, you can do this at home or professionally. I would say professionally because mind over matter, a Brazilian wax typically costs 20 to $200 depending on where you're going and like where you live and the professionalism of the place. So if you have a high pain tolerance and small patients, this method might be for you because honey, it's looking to be good to me. When it comes to waxing your bikini line, you typically go between every three and four weeks, and a lot of people do this at home. Personally, I have two methods and two products I would like to recommend if you would like to do this at home, especially since we're in quarantine. And one of these things that is more accessible is this Glee Bikini Wax Strip Set. Now, wax strips have been known to hurt, and honey, these do hurt like hell because you're literally ripping your hair from the hair follicle with a piece of gel. Like, I don't know what you expect, but I love these a lot because they are cheap, affordable, found at Walmart, and they smell really good, and they're really easy to use. So, 10 out of 10, gonna have to use those in a couple weeks because honey birthday's coming up and I got plans. The next product I'm going to recommend which is a more over the top product it is the Vinco home hair removal kit. You can use this for any other part of your body this is specifically for your bikini line so depending on where you want to invest your money I got this to do my brows uh, mustache and other parts of my body it's just like that but when it comes to down there I'd rather stick to strictly bikini waxing kits. Now when it comes to bikini line do them at home or professionally but just know when you're doing it professionally they cost between 20 and 50 dollars depending on where you go where you live and the professionalism and quality of the place and they do everything for you so it makes it 10 times easier you don't have to be counting down to 10 because you're scared to rip it off they're just rip it off really quick nine times out of ten they make the experience 10 times better because they know what they're doing but if you do decide to do it at home just know when it comes to applying wax strips or hard wax which is what this is you always want to apply the wax in the direction that the hair is growing and you want to rip it off in the direction the hair is growing as well after that you want to apply pressure because it is going to hurt because down there is a sensitive area as a whole. Y'all know it's pretty sensitive, hence the reason we're having these conversations. And then after that, you're going to want to apply some aloe vera and then maybe exfoliate. I don't like to exfoliate after doing that. If it's just my bikini line, I'll exfoliate the area, but if we're talking about the whole thing, couldn't be me. I am here to give you some of my favorite hair removal products, although I have mentioned them earlier in the video if you didn't hear me clear the first time. Let's go ahead and get into these razors. Now, when it comes to shaving in general, I like to use Joy razors for just like the rest of my body because they're super gentle, super really, really, really good quality. Let's get into that. And they're sold at Walmart. Walmart is the best. They got everything. Along with the Glee Shave Mousse, and I also like to use the POS Shaving Cream because that moisturizes my skin a lot, but something about shaving mousse is just more fun. I don't know what it is. When it comes to specific down there I like to use men's razors with at least four to five blades because the more blades the less work you have to do and when it comes to cream slash hair removal you know barriers that you use down there sometimes I don't even use anything but when I do I like to use conditioner and or coconut oil to soften up the hair and make the experience a little less como se dice annoying <laughs> and when it comes to waxing like mentioned before I love the Glee bikini wax wax strips and the Venco at home hair removal kit this is for more of the overall body removal hair and I like this for my bikini line specifically. I never personally waxed down there by myself or I had it professionally done because I'm not 18. Can you imagine the conversation with my mom and I'm like, hey, can I get my whole coochie wax? For what? I don't know. Girl, you know for what? Let it go. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot of information and that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was long, but this was a long awaited video that you guys have been asking me for. I went over things such as periods, keeping it fresh, things you should be wearing, things you shouldn't be wearing, favorite products, hair removal. Let me know some of your tips and tricks for your hoo-ha, pom-pom, purse, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comments. Let's keep it classy and mature, please, because this is a safe space, and a lot of people might not have a figure to talk to when it comes to stuff like this. It's okay to help people out, okay? Once again, I'd also like to remind you to head over to Aslia's channel to make sure you check out her hygiene video because she is my go-to. Y'all think I'm your big sister? She's my big sister when it comes to stuff like this. <laughs> you can see we're practicing social distancing. See? Collabing from a distance, period. Make sure you guys give this video a huge thumbs up down below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on my post notifications on so you can see every time I upload it'll be greatly appreciated let's see if I can get 600k by June amazing birthday present I would love to see it make sure you follow my social medias that includes my Instagrams Twitter and Spotify so you can keep up with me when I am not on camera and guys that is it for today's video I once again hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you on the next one stay cool bye guys